God, I'm gonna cry again. I already feel it coming, man. Oh, dude, what a brave dude. What a brave dude. That just freaks me out. Oh, dude, my God, stop crying. Just, uh, please. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. He was there by himself. What a badass, man. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> man, <laughs> is terrifying. God damn it, man. <sighs> no. I don't wanna watch this episode. I'm already scared. I'm already nervous. Those events would come back, and, and you never forget them. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, guys. I was really hoping I wasn't going to cry. I'm just, like, already dreading the tears that are probably inevitably going to come. Easy Company was once again called on to help push the Germans back through the bulge. Okay. Do they have better gear this time? Like, more winter gear? It, oh, it looks like it. They're in winter coats. That's good, at least. I was glad to be out of my foxhole and moving again. Oh, it's Lipton narrating this series, so we're focused on him. Interesting. I feel like this is the first time we've heard, like, narration from somebody besides winners. Oh, what? Does he have a Luger? Thank you. I'm not gonna lie. The fact that he got the Luger made me think he was gonna die there or something, like... Hubler had been talking about getting a Luger since Normandy. I'm like terrified that this guy's not gonna survive now that he got his gun. I mean, I really can't handle any of these men dying at this point. Where's like, Dyke? We know so many of them now, but... He's around. Yeah, Lieutenant Dyke. Where is Lieutenant Dyke? Sarge. Okay, what the hell is that? <laughs> oh, Jesus, it's who be shot! Sniper! No, no, he... He shot himself! What? Shot himself? Oh, damn, that's not good. The Luger? Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Warm him up, warm him up. You hear me? Oh my god, no way. You got a loaded Luger in your pocket, bro, really? Take it easy. Stay there, Hoop. Doc. Doc. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Really? Is that really what happened? Yeah. Bullet cut the main artery in his leg, sir. Yeah. This actually f***ing happened, guys? Like, that's so ironic. It's like un almost unbelievable. Where's Dyke? Yeah, where is Dyke? No, I just would have expected to get this kind of news from him. Yeah, not Lip. Well, I was, uh, I was there, sir. Huh. Figured it might as well be me. No, it's just the fact that Dyke is not around. Dyke wasn't a bad leader because he made bad decisions. No, he was a bad leader because he made no decisions. Interesting. Ooh, I like that line. Dyke was a favorite of somebody at Division. Uh. He'd been sent down to E Company to get some combat experience. Sometimes we got the feeling E Company was an annoyance to him. Uh huh. Something unpleasant he had to get through before he could continue his march up the ladder. Probably. Probably what it was. I mean, I'm happy that Winners got promoted, but really, he cares about Easy Company, you know? I like wish he was here. <laughs> These Germans got tanks. I know. Yeah. And our side's gonna want to go into that town. <laughs> I feel like Garnier's accent has like gotten more extreme. Where the CEO has got his head so far his fucking ass that lump in his throat is his goddamn nose. There's the Garnier I know and love. <laughs> Be careful if he offers you a cigarette. What are they talking about? <laughs> if who offers us a cigarette? Spears. Oh, Spears. Spears is the kind of scary one. Yeah, this guy. He's scary. The stories about Spears are probably all bull anyway. <laughs> he looks crazy. Well, supposedly Spee has shot one of his own men for being drunk. Oh, I doubt that. I doubt that. Well, maybe in the foot. Maybe he would, actually. We're not gonna fall back. Right, Lieutenant? Hmm? Right, Lieutenant? Fine. You all take care of it. I gotta go talk to Regiment. Holy f this guy is so useless. Oh my god! Uh-oh. Incoming! I was gonna say, I would worry about being here if they knew. Come on, find some cover! A tree just landed on top of his foxhole. Oh my god. Oh my god! It blows my mind every time we see scenes like this. And just the timing that had to be just right. What I saw that day was the most awesome and terrifying display of firepower I'd ever seen in my life. Of course, I wouldn't have been laughing if I'd known what happened to Joe Toy. No.
Oh God, I don't want to see. I don't want to see anything graphic, guys. This is so sad. Oh no, guys. Oh. I thought Joe was the one that landed in the hole with the tree on top of him, but I guess not. Yeah, I think that's Joe. Oh no. Stay. No. Oh God, Garnier. Oh Garnier, I worry for him too. Come on, Joe. He's getting up to help. No! no, 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 no. Oh my god, you guys. You stay down! First Sergeant Lipton? You get things organized here. I'm gonna go for help. What do you mean go for help? What? What do you mean go for help? What a piece of shit. I hope he never got promoted. He doesn't deserve shit. What a useless POS. No. <laughs> No! <laughs> oh my god. They're both still alive. You gotta smoke. They're both still alive. Jesus. What's the guy gotta do to get killed around here? <laughs> Joe. Hey, you got old guy needed this time. We got you, soldier. No! Ah. Oh. Hey, Joe, I told you I beat you back to the States. <laughs> Please tell me they both survived. I can't. Great impression of Dyke. You think so? Don't do it anymore. Especially the part about what he said to me. It doesn't do anybody any good, okay? Yeah. I got you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the yawn is pretty good. It is pretty good. Not again. Oh my god, Luz, please. Luz! Oh my god, this is actually so stressful seeing it in slow motion like this. Come on. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was so jarring. Dude, this barrage is just relentless. Oh no. No. He's smoking a cigarette. That's his. Oh my god. But you didn't smoke. I don't. Uh-huh. Oh my god, please don't go off. Please don't go off. Please don't go off. Please don't go- Oh my god! Oh my god! <sighs> that is so- This whole Luz and I were in was a dud. Oh my god! That's so lucky. The one that hit Muck and Pinkala's fox wasn't. Right. Oh. Wow. Dude, the way Luz saw them go is- can you, That's gotta be so unreal. Can you imagine crawling towards a foxhole you think is safety and then all of a sudden they're gone? E Company would lead the attack. The problem was, at least in my estimation, E Company still did not have a leader. Yep. Well, they do. They do. It's you. He's always yawning. The actor playing him really is doing such a great job at making this guy so, like, unlikable and not in it. You know, not really in the war. Hold up! What? Hold up what? No! Get out of there! Move! Move! Why are we stopping? Fall back! Fall back! This is such a Go forward! Go forward! You know what? This guy's gonna get so many men killed, and then he'll get demoted and removed from his position. Yeah. Yeah. What's the plan? I don't know! I don't know! I don't know! Oh my god! We We're gonna be kind of alone out there! Fire! You shouldn't listen to him. You should like <laughs> Oh my god, this guy is just not in a condition to lead this group. Sir, we are sitting ducks here. We have to keep moving! Oh my god, he can't even handle this. Spears, get yourself over here! He's fing so angry. Yep, Spears will do it. Oh my god, his Go, kid. Webb was already dead. Oh my god, Spears! It's like a hero emerging through that smoke. That was so cinematic. I'm taking over. You're done. You're out of here. All right, I want mortars and grenade launchers on that building till it's gone. When it's gone, I want first to go straight in. Forget going around. Forget going around? Yeah, because it was a dumbass idea. Look at him just going. He 
he's just sitting there just totally frozen in fear. Listen, I don't blame a man for being terrified, but he accepted this position and clearly was using it as a stepping stone for something else. Like, you're in the wrong line of work, dude. If we don't connect with that, they're gonna slip away. That's right, right, right here. here. Oh my God, he's just crazy, this man. I respect him a lot. He is so efficient. Look at him go! Oh my God! At first, the Germans didn't shoot at him. Please don't hit him. They couldn't quite believe what they were saying. Yeah, it's amazing. The astounding thing was that after he hooked up with Eye Company, he came back. <gasps> oh my God! Dude, this guy's a fucking hero! Wow! I love Spears. He's terrifying, but I love him. He's amazing. He's the exact opposite of Dyke. We'd come into Belgium with 121 men and officers plus 24 replacements. That's 145 total. We we're going out with 63. Wow, that's tough. Kenneth Webb, Harold Webb, Alex Pankala, and Skip Muck. That's such a poetic way to show how many men they've lost by like showing them there and then fading away like ghosts. That's really like sad. Beyond the wounded and killed, every man at Bastogne suffered. Men unhit by shrapnel or bullets was nevertheless were nevertheless casualties. Oh, interesting. It looks like, so I was looking up Lieutenant Dyke, and it looks like he did have some success in World War II and was awarded like a Bronze Star for some of his heroic acts. But he was transferred to Easy Company and just maybe didn't have a great time with that transition and wasn't prepared to lead them. It seems like he did better with other platoons or other groups. And then when he was transferred to Easy Company, he froze during that attack on Foy. And so like the portrayal of him in the series is probably a little bit over the top or maybe it's, it's just a perspective from Easy Company. Well, he died in 1989, so at least he didn't have to watch this <laughs> show. That would be rough. <laughs> I had missed Bastogne. When I was finally able to rejoin Easy Company, they... Oh, he rejoined. Oh, this guy wasn't in the battle. What about, uh, Hubler? Where's he? Oh, man. Coming in with the wrong energy, man. I'm sorry. You come from the hospital? Yeah. I said, like that hospital. Uh, we left Holland four months ago. Oh. Then the replacement depot. Well, I'm sure you try to bust out and help with some Bastogne weapons. I don't know how I would have done that. Well, it's funny, because Popeye found a way. So did Allie, right? Back at home. <sighs> Garnier. And... Yeah, where is Garnier? You still your platoon sergeant? Oh my god, man. This man has missed a lot. I don't blame them all for resenting him a little bit for coming in late. Why don't you go talk to Captain Spears? Make sure he wants you with us. Mm. Yeah, a lot happened, man. You, you, you gotta, you know, listen, man, you missed a lot, okay? I was a veteran of D-Day and Market Garden and had been with the company since its formation. But now, because I had missed Bastogne, I was treated as a replacement. Damn. Like I was starting all over again. That's tough, man. That's tough. He was there for freaking D-Day and shit. Like, and they need all the help they can get. I don't blame these men for being, like, salty, but at the same time, he, he deserves to be here, you know? Real. Lieutenant Jones, sir. Right, our West Pointer. Oh, from West Point? When'd you graduate? June 6th, sir. June 6th of last year. Wow, what a time to be. He graduated on D-Day. Oh my God, how poetic. Are there other officers in the platoon? No, sir, just Sergeant Malarkey. But they tell me he's getting a battlefield commission. Maybe he'll be assisting you, sir. Oh, cause he's a lieutenant, interesting. Is he a lieutenant automatically from going to West Point? Is that how that works? Or is it just, how do you become a lieutenant if he doesn't have experience? There are three men. Here in this room that they think should be on the patrol. Who? God, he's really stringing out this tea, man. Just say. Well, if I tell you, you can't let on that you know. Why? Your secret safe word. They're gonna let on. They're gonna tell immediately. Efron. <laughs> McClung. And you. So it's McClung, Efron, and Ramirez. I'll tell him. I just need Listen to- Listen up! Know. Oh, he's gonna tell him right now. He's gonna tell him right now. So far, Spears wants McClung. We know. Yeah, we've just heard. Webster here told us. Oh, psh. great job, guys. Oh my god. Lieutenant Jones over here is pissed that Webster told. Just left him. I was on my way back. Did you know him well? No. Not really. 
Man, imagine seeing your friend die like that and then just going and taking a shower in the same town that's getting bombed. You're just like, all right, time to go get a shower now. Like, you just got to keep moving forward one foot in front of the other, despite everything you see. Poor Malarkey. He's just been through so much, man. He looks he looks so different compared to how when he started the show, you know, when he started the war. Sergeant Malarkey's really in no condition to be on this patrol. And maybe if you offered, you could go in his place. Mm hmm Being that you are an officer. No, they want someone with experience. The guys they picked up plenty of that. He's gonna try to convince him to volunteer. Malarkey needs a break. Malarkey needs time to grieve. Secured four rubber boats, get you across the river. Lieutenant Jones here is the ranking officer, and he'll be along as an observer. An observer, Sergeant okay. Sergeant Martin here will lead the patrol. Oh, Sergeant Martin's leading, okay. Whole battalion. Oh. Covering your withdrawal. Uh-oh, he's mad that Webster's here. Oh, boy. McClung, Sisk, Cobb, Garcia, and Webster, this translator. He's, he looks like, oh, sh**. I forgot Webster speaks German. Yeah. I do remember him a little bit from the very beginning. It feels like a long time ago. I wonder if he'll earn back a little bit of respect, pay his dues a bit. They can't, so they they just don't go. He can't swim? Oh my God. Well, that's already rough. I mean, listen, it's probably hard to stay in a boat like that. There's a lot of men in those little boats, but still, my God. Let's go. Jackson, wait. Jackson, what the f are you doing? He threw a grenade and then barreled in there? pick up Jackson. We're moving out. Jackson, oh my God. You didn't, just went barreling in there because you were so eager to be a hero. Come on, we all go together. Let's go, move, move out. Oh, this is so stressful. This is so messy. I don't know if Jackson is okay. Worst time to get injured. Holy f Oh, this is terrifying. This is, man, being a part of this mission would suck. Oh my God, they're just sitting ducks. This is just terrifying. They got wounded, but they were successful. They got prisoners. Keep still, keep calm, buddy. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Wow, this is. Yeah, you're in it now, man. You. No! Jeopardize the entire mission. Listen to me, brother. Oh my God, everyone's losing it. Everyone's losing it. They've been in war too long, man. All right, look at the flame, Jackson. Look at the flame. Okay. Oh my god, I don't want to, everybody calmed down and went silent when he arrived. Oh, not gonna die. I need you to hang on! Jackson! No! Oh my god. Eugene Jackson was 20 years old. 20. He'd lied about his age when he joined the army at 16. Oh. He was just one more casualty in a war that was supposed to be all but over. Yeah. That's so sad. That's so tragic. Dude, that scene was so chaotic. Can you imagine every time they had to take a break and then start shooting again and just pick right up in the chaos and the screaming and the and the movement and then just for everything to just become so still when the medic came in, like there might be hope and, and there wasn't. It was his own grenade. It was his own grenade. Yeah, I was gonna say he ran in right after he threw a grenade. He just like went right in. He just shouldn't have been on the mission. You know, a lot of these men had just been in battle too long, like. I don't know, Dick. I don't know what to tell you. He gave him a successful patrol. Now he wants to. Ugh. Successful. You lost a man. It's the same roster as last night. Same roster. Are you kidding me? Y'all did a damn fine job on a tough mission last night. I well, wish you good luck tonight, because I'd be expecting more of the same. Why are we doing this again? I'm damn sure you remind them how proud I am of what they did. I don't think they give a f dude. I don't think they care. We recovered all the boats, so we'll be setting off from the same place we did last night. We're not changing the plan any, sir. That seems reckless. No, nope. plan's the same. Dude, can you imagine getting this news and you just like want everything, but just to like say no, and you can't, you have to take orders. I want you all to get a full night's sleep tonight, which means in the morning, you will report to me that you made it across the river into German lines. We're unable to secure any live prisoners. What? Understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. Did he actually do that? Did he actually tell them to just pretend? 
So a second patrol never happened. Wow. It was Captain Nixon wrote up a bogus report and regiment never That's got That's insane. I'm kind of glad they did it, man. That was so dumb when they were going to have him go again. When you know damn well you're not going to get any useful information out of a patrol like that. Like, you're probably not going to get prisoners to tell you anything useful. Oh, Cliffs. Oh. What does that mean? Congratulations. He's a major now. After lying? <laughs> After lying in the report, he's a major now. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Aww. He took his hand just in time for the car to start moving. <laughs> That's nice. I like the journey for both of those characters, Jones and Webster, through this episode. Like watching them earn favor and respect. By the time they left Hagenau, Easy Company's European campaign had taken them from England to France, Holland, and Belgium. Soon they would be entering Germany. Damn. Of course, they were doing what they were supposed to do, and I was trying to do what I was supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, but uh, under different circumstances, we might have been good friends. Yeah, that is the hard part about war. Yeah, I've I've met um, even concentration camp survivors who've expressed the same sentiment. Like, obviously, there are a lot of evil people on the German side and a lot of evil Nazis who really just did not have an empathetic human bone in their body. But there are a lot of people who were just doing what they were told to do and maybe didn't agree with it. And it doesn't make it right. But at the same time, like war is ugly. And this this war in particular was really ugly because of the genocide involved. And I've met a lot of concentration camp survivors who've really forgiven a lot of the Nazis because they're just like, I want to move on with my life. And I'm sure a lot of them didn't really understand what they were doing or like weren't in agreement with it. But at the same time, like it doesn't make it right. But yeah, I, I do have empathy for both sides of soldiers because it, it's just hard. And there's also a lot of soldiers who, you know, never went to a concentration camp, didn't really probably know exactly what they were fighting for. I mean, you know, to a certain extent, because you see the propaganda and what Hitler was doing, but not trying to make an excuse for it. But at the same time, like I, I do empathize. Man, it is so crazy seeing the rubble of this city turned to ruin and everybody's lost their homes and loved ones and and like they still have their instruments you know they managed to keep their instruments safe and at least they have their music one month earlier we're going back in time Germany's looking like it's gonna be pretty good fraternizing territory huh yeah oh my god we have not seen that this series oh my lord saluting in that to spears of all people that's hilarious that's actually hilarious oh he's taking all that out of germany oh my god thanks you're welcome sir he looks really unhappy this is the unhappiest i've ever seen nixon ever he's usually always got like a smile on his face or he's tired and just waking up well your folks are sure gonna have quite a collection by the time you get Home, sir. Find his keepers. Jesus, he's so intimidating. He's so intimidating. He was like, what are you going to say about my collection? I don't really like that. I'm not going to lie. Taking, But I mean, that's part of wartime. The winners take all sometimes. But And it's like, you know, they did go through hell. That would make me sad if that was like my family's heirlooms. How'd it go this morning? The job. It was great. The rest of the boys? Oh, well, they blew up over Germany somewhere. Boom. Sorry. About what? Well, tough situation. Oh, yeah, the boys. Yeah, it's terrible. Mm. You know, the real tragedy is they also lost their CEO, so I guess he gets to write all the letters home. Mm. Never, maybe that's why he's all upset. That's sad. She'll be happy to hear that Sink is transferring you back down to Battalion S3. Is that a... What do you think I should write to these parents, Dick? Yeah, I was going to say, isn't that a demote? Yeah, demotion? demoted, yeah. gotcha. He doesn't even care. You tell him what you always tell him. Our sons died as heroes. You really still believe that? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I love that we're getting Nixon as like a more pessimistic, downtrodden, like just completely wrecked perspective compared to Winners, who's like now trying to pick him up. Thanks. Listen, I'm having some trouble finding some whiskey. Uh, whiskey? Yeah. 
particular brand of whiskey. He's trying to numb the pain. I gotta be honest with you, sir. That ain't gonna be easy to find here in Germany. Pagans are kind of slim here. Maybe you should stop drinking it like water. 300,000 crowds just surrendered. 300? Yeah. We're moving out in an hour. One hour? Yeah. He looks pissed about it. Uh, sir, sir. Your mail. Man, Nixon is in rough shape. He's got a problem. I don't blame him. I mean, for developing a habit like that in wartime. Jesus Christ, the dog? What about the dog? Did your dog die? Kath is divorcing me. And she's taking the dog? She's taking everything. She's taking the house, taking the kid. Oh my God. It's not even her dog. It's my dog. She's taking my dog. He's falling apart, man. Oh my God, that's heartbreaking. I can't understand people divorcing their partners like this when they're abroad in war. Like, especially if it looks like the war's about to end. Like, you can't f***ing wait. I understand that maybe like two years has been a lot to be without your husband. I get it. But like, is it really gonna matter if you wait until he gets home to divorce his ass? Like, tell him to his face. I just think it's so sh I'm not saying maybe these men deserve to, you know, maybe the, the wives weren't being treated well, but it's just so shitty to be like, okay, I'm sending you a letter, I'm divorcing you, breaking up with you while you're in Germany fighting World War II. Like, my God. She hates that dog. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, Nixon. He's usually so funny. I'm like sad seeing him all upset. The record's still playing. That's... Interesting. So someone's probably here and he's just gonna pour alcohol right away. Dude, you haven't even really cleared the house yet, have you? I mean, maybe it's fine. Maybe I don't need to worry. Oh, wow. Is that her husband? Interesting. Oh. The dog just tormenting him, reminding him of his own impending divorce, losing his dog. I can't believe she's taken the dog. That is actually disrespectful. You're gonna take the kid, take the house, and take the dog? What, you want this man to have nothing to live for? How could you hate him that much? I mean, I don't know, maybe there were a lot of divorces though because like a lot of women became empowered during World War II. They could work jobs and were allowed into the workforce and stuff. So there's also an element of that, which was a good thing, but anyway. What's that noise? Something burning? There's smoke, something is burning. He's running. What's burning? Is it bodies? He's running really fast. Frank, Frank, what is it? I don't know, sir. What was it? What was burning? Oh, the concentration camp. Yeah, yeah. They came across the entire concentration camp. Yeah, right, because they didn't know about this kind of stuff at the time. I just saw the smoke and I thought they found a fire, but yeah. Oh, God, I really... I'm just really nervous for this kind of stuff because some of the stories you heard about like soldiers feeding people and their stomachs couldn't handle the food and then they died because they were starved so much. Like, I don't really want to see anything like that. Chris, you seen any of your men speak German? Yeah, did we not bring Liebgott or, yeah, Liebgott. Liebgott and Webster? Oh, and he's Jewish. Well, at least he said he was going to find a nice Jewish girl, so I'm assuming he's Jewish, but yeah, all the burned bodies, that was where the smoke was coming from. Will you ask him, uh... Ask him what kind of campuses. Um, yep. They're just like so, they're so confused as to why this is even happening, you know? He says it's a war camp for uh, unwanted, disliked, maybe. Criminals? No, not criminals. Beamte, Bauern, Doctors, musician, Schreiber, Schneider, tailors, clerks, farmers, intellectuals, I mean, normal people. Juden. Yeah. Juden. Jews, yeah. Juden. Oh, oh my God. There's so much death, man. It's horrible. I think the only reason I'm even remotely handling this okay is because of Ben Auschwitz. And when, so this is all of like a retelling of the story, but like it's the same imagery that it's just as horrific. But like when you see the real images and you know that those were real people, like I think that's the only reason I'm like remotely holding it together right now. God, they really did not spare any of the horrific stuff. Like they're really showing it all. Find spears and figure out how the hell to give him some food. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you gotta feed him slowly. Shut up, dude. No, you're losing all the bread, man. 
Webster. How about a human being? Are you one of those? Or are you gonna tell me that you never smelled the stench? Yeah, I'm calling him on his bullshit too. You knew what was going on. You lived here. You saw them cart Jews away, bro. You could smell the smell of the gas chamber. Oh no, they're gonna feed him too fast. Please don't show, like, I hope, I, I hope we're not seeing that part, please. I don't, okay, maybe it'll be fine. I need to calm down. I've just heard so many stories and it's like, I just don't, oh, maybe it'll be fine. <laughs> I gotta relax. Oh God. Like they need to be fed. I just don't, I've heard stories of people getting fed too fast and I'm just like, don't want to see more people die right now, man. They're starving. We give them too much to eat too quickly, they'll eat themselves to death. Yeah. <sighs> okay, it really just hit me. I was holding it together until now. We need to keep them centralized so we can supervise their food intake and medical treatment. So until we find some place better. <sighs> God, they gotta stay here. <sighs> These prisoners have to be put back in the camp immediately. Uh, with all of the people around them that have died and the place that they've been tortured for years. Locals claim that uh, they never even knew the camp existed. I mean, maybe they didn't, but You're I- You're gonna have a hell of an education tomorrow. <laughs> General Taylor declared martial law about an hour ago. Ordered every able-bodied German in town aged 14 to 80 to start burying the body. Wow. Wow. That's going to be a real rude awakening for those that had no idea. I can believe that there were a lot of Germans that didn't know what was going on. I, I mean, but in a lot of like big cities, they had to have known people were disappearing. Jews were being taken away by train. Like maybe in the smaller towns, it would be harder to know, but... Yeah, you can tell that a lot of these people didn't know. They're just like so horrified. I mean, it, it's horrifying even if you did know to see this. This is... <laughs> oh, is it the woman from the house? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's the woman from that house with the office, the photo of the officer. Allied forces discovered numerous concentration and death camps. These camps are part of the Nazi attempt to affect the final solution to the Jewish question. Yeah. Between 1942 and 1945, 5 million ethnic minorities and 6 million Jews were murdered, many of them at camps. Yep. I really feel like this series should be required viewing for a lot of people nowadays. <laughs> Anybody who wants to claim that the Holocaust didn't happen, like, should be forced to sit and watch this, should be forced to read some books written by people in the camps. Well, wow. I wonder what the last episode is going to be then. Please accept this as my formal surrender, Major. It is better than to lay it on the desk of a clerk. You may keep your sidearm, Colonel. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't take it either. I'd be like, no, you can either deposit it on the desk of a clerk or I wouldn't even, ugh, I wouldn't even want to salute him. Along the Jap southern defense line, the Yanks progress slowly, facing one of the fiercest artillery barrages of the war. Okay, so yeah, I forgot. The, the war is not over over because there's still the Japanese side. If I'd been in the war for two, two years, I'd be like, I want to go home, man. I'd be done. General Taylor is aware that many veterans, including Normandy veterans, still do not have the 85 points required to be discharged. Including Normandy veterans. He has authorized a lottery to send one man home in each company. One man. Effective immediately. One man home. Wow. The winner is Sergeant Darrell C. Powers. Is that shifty? Shifty. That's how it's done, Shifty. Oh, man. So just him, just he gets to leave out of the people. I mean, there are probably some people that have points, that the but. The 101st Airborne Division will definitely be redeployed to the Pacific. Oh my God, they just can't catch a break. That's so sad. Two days later, Shifty Powers was on a truck headed for the rear in a boat home. Unfortunately, the truck was hit head on by a drunken corporal from another regiment. Shifty had a broken pelvis, a broken arm, and a bad concussion. He survived, but had to spend the next few months in a series of hospitals. I wish I could say that he was our only casualty in Austria. What the f Oh my god, that is horrible luck! At least he survived, but what the f Oh, Jesus. Was that the car he would have been in? Oh my god. With Liebgott? Was it that car? No. It's Private Janovac. Janovac. Oh my god. 75 points. 75 points. The enemy had surrendered, but somehow men were still dying. 
That's horrible. Before Normandy, we're stuck here because they didn't have the points. It's awful. For weapons, alcohol, and too much time on their Right, which is a recipe for disaster. Whoa. Wait here. What happened? You okay, Mac? You need some help? Mac? <laughs> Mac. They wouldn't give me any gas. So you killed them. Crouts. Mac. Oh my god. Oh my god. Put the gun down, dude. This fucking limey wouldn't listen. He should have been out of here. Like he is not mentally well anymore. Hold on a second now, right? Jesus. What? He's not gonna make it. I'm shocked he's even alive right now. Somebody's taking a bigger beat than me or him. Wanna play a different game? Oh, did they find Mac? They found him? Oh, Spears is gonna go kill him. Where is he? You okay? Where is he? Spear, I, I, this is our first time seeing Spears actually mad. <coughs> replacement. It was a replacement that did it, really? I don't want him to kill him. I want him to go to, like, trial. Have the MPs take care of this piece of <laughs> Grant's dead? No. Crowd surgeon says he's gonna make it. Really? Did he actually make it after this? This pathetic piece of <laughs> shot this guy in the head. I mean, even if he makes it, he's gonna have severe brain damage. With your permission, I would like to address my men briefly. That'll be fine, General. I hate treating these guys with respect. I hate it. But it is better to just do that and get everything over with as peacefully as possible. Sobel! Captain Sobel. We salute the rank, not the man. He wasn't gonna salute him. What a petty little man. Are you kidding me? My goodness, because he's just envious that he's not in that position, that winners took over him. That was a smooth way to do it. We salute the rank, not the man. He should. <laughs> Nixon's face. <laughs> Mit euch gedient zu haben. I'm proud to have served with each and every one of you. We deserve long and happy lives in peace. This speech really demonstrates how, like, how similar they are to one another, these two groups, you know? And how they just went through the same experience. You awake yet? Wink. Time to go to bed. <laughs> oh my god, that was the sloppiest dive ever. <laughs> you know he had to wait until that was the last take to do that. Unless they just had spare clothes on deck to change him into. That's funny. Wow, could you imagine playing baseball with a view like that? Compton came back to see the company to let us know that he was on. Compton came back? He became a prosecutor in Los Angeles. Really? Wow. Are we going to hear what they all got up to after the war? Webster became a writer for the Saturday Evening Post and Wall Street Journal, and later wrote a book about sharks. Oh, sharks. In 1961, he went out on the ocean alone and was never seen again. Really? Oh my god. Louis Nixon had some tough times after the war. Yeah. He was divorced a couple of couple times. Couple times, oh. Then in 1956, he married a woman named Grace and everything came together for him. Oh, good. He spent the rest of his life with oh, her. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cry. There is not a day that goes by that I do not think of the men I served with who never got to enjoy the world without war. This. Yeah. A very unusual. They're gonna show their names now? Yeah. We knew that we could depend on each other. That's Lipton. This brave, so brave is unbelievable. And oh man, this reveal is amazing. <laughs> I'm just one part of the big war, that's all. Is this Percon? One little part. No, Garnier, that's Garnier. Seemed like you figured, that you thought that you could do just about anything. And after the war was over. Shifty, I was gonna say, he's so soft-spoken, it seems like Shifty. I cherish the memories of a question my grandson asked me the other day when he said, Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? Grandpa said no, but I served in a company of heroes. Oh my God, I can't watch a grown man cry and not also cry. <laughs> oh, I thought I was gonna make it out of the end of this episode without crying. They just knew what they were doing when they made this, y'all. Steven Spielberg <laughs> really knew how to emotionally manipulate me. <laughs>
<laughs> you knew how to slide in powerful sentimental and emotional moments with each episode. Like at the end of this, I was like, oh, I'm fine. And then we start seeing like the real heroes talking and I'm like, oh no, it's coming. <laughs> Oh, this was so well done. This felt like such an accurate portrayal of war because I think it, it's it's so unique. And maybe this is just because I haven't seen a lot of series about wartime and different wars. I've mostly seen movies where there's like a focus on one or two leading characters. This series was like a portrait of like multiple vignettes of all these different characters and their chemistry together and focusing on different elements of what it's like to be a soldier or to be a leader in wartime or to be a medic. And so we got really different perspectives throughout the whole story. Sometimes there'd be like sentimentality, but it really felt like most of the time we were just following the truth of what happened and just getting snippets of what these men were like and what they had to go through. And the battle sequences were just so gruesome and intense and jarring. Like Bastone in particular with the bombing of the trees and like how sharply like somebody would be crawling to a foxhole for safety and then that foxhole would get blown up and the men would be gone. And like the horror of that whole episode, like I thought D-Day was intense, but Bastone really came in and just like, I knew nothing about that battle at all. So to learn about that and just see how horrific it really was. I think they did a fantastic job with the explosions on set, with the effects and the editing and just really making you feel like you were there. The sound design too did such a great job of immersing me each episode. Like even from the beginning when they were dropping in in D-Day, you're on the plane for so long, this rickety loud plane. You can't really hear the men talking around you. The loudness is like deafening in a way because it feels like silence because the men can't really talk. So they're all just kind of sitting waiting to drop in and it's a very sobering time. And then when they finally drop in, the choice to like hang on winners for a bit there in his parachute, we just had that audio fade out of the noise on the plane to like the wind in his parachute. And it just felt like going from this heavy oppressive noise to like levity for a moment. And then right away, you're hearing bombing, you're hearing planes falling out of the sky, you're hearing gunshots. It just felt so immersive. Like each episode, there were moments like that too. I mean, a lot of Winter's PTSD flashbacks were often triggered by a visual or by sound. And they did a really great job of making me feel like I was in his head a lot of the time. The editing of this show, the cinematography, everything, everything was just so brilliant. And it felt so fast paced in the moments of action that it didn't really give you time to process what was going on. And then the suspense and tension in the stillness when there was fear and you didn't know what was around each corner, um, especially the scenes at night where you couldn't see things. I mean, this show was just brilliant from top to bottom. Really, really well done. The acting as well. Um, there were some really fantastic performances, especially from the characters like Blythe and the medic in episode six. These actors did a really fantastic job. Nixon in the last episode, um, I mean, I was really impressed impressed with a lot of the acting in this show. And I just think it was a really well told story. And I'm really glad I got to watch it with you guys. We just got so many different perspectives and a lot of different themes and like retelling of certain themes and certain struggles that were told from multiple different perspectives, like different leadership styles or different people experiencing fear at completely different times, wide eyed optimism and like the gung ho spirit of replacements coming in versus the jaded and distraught and tired soldiers who'd been there for years and who'd seen horrors beyond their wildest dreams. Like there were so many moments of like juxtapositions that made things feel like more impactful even the last episode with the soldiers discovering a concentration camp and finding out what had been going on in Germany paired with this episode of them seeing the eagle's nest and how luxurious the Nazi party was living even that was just so powerful and I do think Spielberg did a great job in the way that he compiled things in the way that he told the story and I, it's funny when I sat down to watch it in the beginning I remember thinking wow like this intro song is really long but I actually really like that song now um, it's really beautiful. And I actually like hearing the whole thing now. <laughs> I don't think it's too long anymore. <laughs> I really enjoyed watching this show with you guys and I hope you enjoyed watching it with me. It's definitely really impactful and really beautifully made. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up so that I know and I can check out more stuff like this in the future with all of y'all. Of course, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below or anything else you might like me to check out next and subscribe if you want to. Till the next one, stay golden. Bye.